I learned the corner better with my mummy's help. Kids aren't too young to learn good technique. What were your corners like three months ago before we started learning how to corner? My feet, both my feet came off. Do you want to know why your kids can't corner? How to corner better? I taught my five-year-old how to do better corners in motocross. Kids need to understand how to corner, which is something we can teach them at home without being or paying for a motocross coach. And it's easier to teach good technique young than it is to undo bad habits later. So these are my three favourite tips that I use to help Harley with his corners. I, I can still have thinking hat. Well, I'm still learning. We've been taking Harley to motocross tracks for more than three years now. He's had lessons off some of the best coaches in the UK, watched some of the best riders, and he still wasn't getting how to corner. Using my background in teaching, I made these videos to help other parents help their kids too. Harley's corners have gone from this, from slow and sometimes dangerous corners, to this, much more controlled and noticeably faster too, in just two months. I'm not a motocross across coach, I'm just a regular mom who spent far too long finding out how to corner, then teaching it to Harley. And it worked. And today we have been focusing on body position yeah. and pushing the outside peg yeah. for grip yeah. and elbows up. Two, three. Uh. Tip number one, body position. Working on your body position can give you so much more control of your bike and therefore more confidence. Can you stand up in the attack position? Let go of your bars and stay in that same attack position. Let's get on your bike, let's go over some body position. And then later on, we'll go through the why, your attack position, okay? <laughs> Do we think he needs some new kit? <laughs> Balls or feet on the pegs. Knees in line with your pegs. Harley, what else do your knees do? Bend a little bit. Yeah, and what else do they do that's super important? Yeah. Show me your elbows up. Now, a little bit less exaggerated. It just has to be a bit. That's it. Are you ready to go for a ride? Yeah. Let's go try it out. Take Should we put a different one on? Yeah. <laughs> this is how I taught my five-year-old better motocross cornering in just a few sessions. So here are the tips that helped Harley the most and why it matters. And it's easier than I was expecting. Can you let go of your bars and keep your head in the same place? Wow, see how good you're gripping there. With your bike on the stand or being held up by a grown-up, put the balls of your feet on the pegs. That's the bit just before your toes. Being on the balls of your feet lets your ankles move, which helps you to keep your knees in line with your pegs. And gripping the bike with your knees gives you control over the bike, taking that pressure off your arms, which reduces arm pain. Arm pump. Having your elbows up is a strong position in most sports. Think how much stronger you are when you're like this versus like this. Tip number two, don't sit too early. I know I forget to weight my pegs when I'm going around a corner. So if I do a whole lap standing up before I do the rest of the session, it reminds me that if I push my pegs, I have much more grip going around them corners. Sometimes corners get rough. As the day goes on, you start to find bumps all around the corner. You wouldn't sit on a bumpy straight, would you? Learn to stand up for the entire corner. On a hard packed track like this one, you tend to find braking bumps on the way into the turn and acceleration bumps on the way out. Standing up deep into the corner before sitting for the turn. Then standing up again for the exit, ready for them acceleration bumps. Tip number three, know your zones. You have three zones. Braking zone. Brake early to get on the acceleration early. If you brake late, you lose all of your speed by skidding into the turn. Brake too late and you risk missing your line entirely. It's hard to remember to brake early, especially in a race, because it feels opposite to what you need to do to go fast. Whereas if you brake early, if you can get on the throttle sooner, hit the line that you want and maintain your balance, you're going to get round that corner faster. Setup zone. This is where weighting that outside peg will give you more confidence to lean your bike and get more speed around the turn. Just look at this as an example. Weighting your outside peg gives you more traction, more grip. Just don't weight the inside peg or you'll hit the floor faster than a kid being hit with a gym ball. You want to transition from standing and braking to sitting and accelerating in one smooth motion. And then there's the acceleration zone. Aim for one steady throttle as you accelerate out of that corner. Harley was a classic throttle on throttle off sort of kid. He would approach a corner far too fast, brake really late, get on the throttle, stand the bike up, and the bike was wiggling all over the place. Ruts were impossible, completely out of his league. Recently, we've been slowing the approach down. So he approaches a corner braking and gets on the throttle much sooner. When he gets on the throttle, he holds it steady. It might have been slower to begin with, but he's gradually getting faster as he's getting more confident with the corner and ruts are becoming a possibility now. Corners are also one of the main areas that kids lose time to in a race. Go on, Harley. Go on, 
Wouldn't you want to see your kid do better? And do you remember what I said about your hands? How to make your hands be able to keep your elbows up? What did you do? So at home, we actually went and practiced turning door handles. So on a throttle, if you're holding your throttle with this bit of your hand and you twist the throttle, your elbow will just go down. If you hold the throttle with this bit of your hand and twist, your elbow can stay up, which is the same movement as opening a door handle. Yeah, so when you use this bit of your hand as well, right, so imagine this is a throttle. If you're holding with this part of your hand here, if you're holding with this part of your hand, this is also your braking finger, right? So if you're holding with these, these fingers and you're letting go to brake, you're letting go of your grip. Whereas if you're holding with this bit of your hand, you're keeping your grip secure when you're using your brake. Yeah. yeah? So you've got control of your brake, control of your throttle, and your elbows stay up. Yeah? Should we go out and practice that again? Yeah? Let's go. Next thing to work on is Harley's leg and foot position. He lets his inside foot drag low and turn out, which risks catching it on the floor. But for him to have reached this point after just a few sessions of focusing on technique, compared to how he rode only a couple of months ago, I think it's working. This was how Harley was riding before we did some work at home. When we first had the coaching, maybe Harley wasn't old enough. Maybe he wasn't ready as a rider in himself because he was already thinking about too many things about how to control the bike. He wasn't ready for the extra information that the coach was giving him. And so he then switched off and he wasn't listening properly. It doesn't mean the coaching was bad, it just means that he wasn't ready. And this is how he's riding now. And most of this work he did at home, just sitting on his bike in the garage or doing a colouring sheet to show where to brake, where to set up, where to accelerate. Learn the body position, learn the zones, get your kids riding better.